Welcome back to another episode of Steve Talks About Night Vision Stuff. On this episode, we're going to talk about the Infrared Hybrid HYH50W. Um, we're going to go into you know the exterior, what's new, what's standard, uh, what makes this what makes this interesting. I'm going to go in through the menu system as well as show you some of the footage that we captured with this scope. So let's get into it. So what's interesting about this particular scope is that it takes everything that Infrared has in terms of features and dials it up another notch. Uh, so not only is this the scope, it actually acts as a clip-on as well. So you can use this in standalone as well as in front of an already zero day optic. Um, Memory is bumped up from, 60, from 32 to 64 gigs. Um, has obviously support for laser rangefinder, takes offboard USB power, improved mount. Uh, they added a multifunction dial just to make getting around easier. It now supports uh, BDC reticles, so if you had ballistic data, you can actually input that directly into the scope itself, and it'll show you a BDC drop reticle. Um, obviously, along with the laser rangefinder, so it actually makes uh, you know your targeting a lot easier. Uh, the uh, batteries are going to be the same as the ones you already have if you already have a Rico series, so the RH35 or the RH50, exact same battery. So that that's about five to six hours of battery life. Uh, 2K AMOLED screen. I think this is the first of its kind in any thermal device. Uh, so that's 2560 by 1920 and an AMOLED display, huge eye box. It's a base 2.6x magnification, supports picture in picture, um, has a optional Bluetooth uh, remote. So if you wanted to put something on top of here and you weren't able to access the buttons, or if you're mounting this um, as a clip on and you don't want to have to reach forward to hit the controls, there's an optional Bluetooth control for this, which will you know allow you to manipulate the menu system if you need to. Okay, so we'll start from the front and work our way to the back. Uh, first thing you'll notice is that it has this brand new mount system. Um, basically, this is a huge improvement over the old Rico series, which had like a weird button that you had to push to release the latch. Um, this one is kind of, kind of like a similar to an American defense manufacturing mount. Um, has these lockable latches that you have to depress this to get, the, get it to open. What's also nice about this design is that you can actually, once it's open, you can actually adjust the tension and we basically adjust for off-spec rails. Um, this whole mount is a vibration damping mount. So underneath the scope here, there's a couple of springs uh, so that you know if you're mounting this on larger calibers, you, it will reduce the sort of the felt recoil on the actual scope itself because you know it is still sensitive electronics. Uh, Built-in recoil lugs so that you don't you know the mount doesn't shift. Again, um, you have the ability to dial in the amount, the right amount of um, tension on the actual Picatinny rail itself. Um, one thing to note is it's still cantilevered. So uh, what's nice about this is that, you know, you don't, you, you, what, I guess on most like ARs, if you actually were to center the scope over the actual um, mounting footprint, you're going to be limited. Whereas this one, you actually, uh, the scope is cantilevered backwards towards you. So you actually have a bit more freedom as to where you would like to mount it. For those of you who are wondering if this is the same as the Rico series, if the bolt hole spacing is the same, it's not, it's different. Um, as well, with regards to the actual laser rangefinder, you cannot use the Rico laser rangefinder with this. This one was gonna have its own uh, LRF. Moving on to the actual scope itself, uh, this is a 50 mil lens model. Um, they also have this in a 35 mil lens model. So basically that would be the HYH35W as, as opposed to the HYH50W. Uh, so all that means is two things. One is the base magnification as well as the actual detection recognition identification ranges. Typically um, with a 50 mil lens like this, you're looking at a recognition range of about two kilometers. And then when you dial it back down to a 35 mil lens, which is a smaller lens, uh, you're going down to about 1.5 kilometers in terms of a recognition range. Um, Moving back a little bit further, this is the adjustable focus wheel. It's good for, f I guess, five meters all the way out to infinity. Um, from our experience, this works really, really well. It's, you know, the, the amount of adjustment is, you know, feels right. It, it's not super sensitive, like where you kind of touch it and, you know, everything's out of focus. And then what's nice about the top controls is that now they've added this multifunction dial. Um, so that makes getting around the menu system a lot easier. For those of you who've used the Rico series, uh, once you got in the menu system, it was kind of clunky because you had to navigate using only four buttons. Um, still has the four buttons here, but just in terms of kind of getting around, it's a bit more intuitive to just use the wheel. Uh, you can press this down, you can hold it down, which gives you the advanced menu, and we'll kind of show you the whole menu system uh, later on in this video. Moving on to the side Picatinny rail, you have, um, this is basically for a laser rangefinder module. They are going to be releasing two different models for it. One is one goes out to one kilometer for a laser rangefinder and another one goes, for two, goes to two kilometers. 
so obviously get the one that it's going to work best for you um, and then moving on to here this uh, USB-C port actually does three different duties one is it charges you can use it as a charger you can transfer data as well as if you have the laser range runner you actually plug that into this port here to feed real-time range information directly into the scope itself so going back to the top you have power uh, photo video um, brightness adjustment this is basically to switch different to different um, thermal modes and then this top picatinny rail I guess they've added for things like a top mount or red dot um, I think you're pretty limited to what you can put here just because of the fact that you need to be mindful about not overlapping uh, these buttons although I suppose if you were to you get the optional Bluetooth controller um, you could I, don't, I guess you can put a laser on top of this um, so, I mean, you know, use your imagination here, but you can remove this all the entire rail if you wanted to just to reduce weight. Um, and then moving on to the side, uh, uses these uh, familiar batteries, same as the, what the Rico and the Finder series. So anything the RH35 uses, RH50, if you already have one of those, uses the exact same batteries. These batteries last from anywhere from five to seven hours and actually ships with two batteries. So, you know, theoretically you're probably good for about 12 hours before you need to charge. Um, also still takes off-board power uh, via the USB-C, so if you had an external battery pack, you can actually extend that quite a bit more. Uh, and then finally, moving back, you have an adjustable uh, diopter assembly, and then um, kind of basically the, the eyepiece is huge compared to um, a lot of the previous models. And but again, what's noteworthy about this scope, it just has a 2K AMOLED screen, which is gonna look and feel a lot sharper. And why that's important is um, when you are using this in clip-on mode, the 2K screen is gonna look, it's gonna, it's gonna break down a lot less uh, when you are zoomed in using your day optic into the actual screen itself. So I'm gonna show you this uh, through scope screen just because there's certain things um, that you can see here um, that you can't see through the actual recorded video. So as an example, if the recorded video is not gonna show you this reticle, it's not gonna have the top menu bar, uh, et cetera. So we'll go through the different modes. Uh, this is white hot, black hot, red hot, rainbow, different rainbow, outline or alert mode, and then back to white hot again. And then I'm gonna turn on picture in picture. So picture in picture is basically an automatic 2X um, zoom on top of what you're currently at. So this one, this device already has a 2.x, sorry, 2.6x base mag. Um, so essentially what you're seeing is 5.2, um, 5.2x on the picture in picture, and then you can actually just punch that in even more so as you continue to go in. And then one last thing I wanted to show you was the clip on mode. So this is basically scope mode. And then if I hold down the camera button and the multifunction button, it goes into clip-on mode. So essentially all, all it really is, is it kind of shrinks um, the display down so that it allows you to uh, see the entire screen once your day scope is zoomed in. So to kind of go back, you just hold down the camera button and the multifunction button, and it goes back to regular scope mode. This is a test of the digital zoom. Target is about three to 400 meters away. And this is 2X, 4X, 8X. As you can see at 8X, my hands are pretty shaky, but uh, if you're on a tripod, it should be pre pretty steady. So we're gonna zoom back out now, back to 1X. So this is just going and showing the different color modes. This is white hot. Black hot, red hot, rainbow, other rainbow, alert mode. Also pay attention to the fact that there is a small gathering about five to 600 meters away um, and it's be able to pick up those heat signatures as well. So this is white hot with picture in picture black hot, red hot, rainbow, rainbow with the highlight, alert mode, 
and then back to white hot again. So the next clip is just going to be the raw audio. Okay, this is the audio test of the HYH50W from Infrared outside urban area. So getting into the menu system now and what it looks like through the scope itself. But there's three different menu systems. Uh, one is the shortcut menu, the other one's the main menu, and then the advanced settings. So I'll try my best to get through everything. Um, so to actually access the quick menu, you just press down on the multifunction dial. This one is just brightness. Um, and then this one's contrast. So you'll see here what I find best is kind of like right in the middle is probably best. Again, it depends on what you're using this for. The next one's sharpness. So if you want the image to be sharper or not, you can adjust that. So this is the fourth menu item. It's non-uniform correction. It determines whether or not you want it to be manual or automatic. Some people like it automatic because that means that this thing auto adjusts to the actual temperature of the sensor core itself um, so that you always get the absolute best image quality. Um, some people don't love that and like to set as a manual so that you can actually set non-uniform correction manually yourself uh, so that you don't get like an interruption in the image itself. So the next menu item is um, zeroing distance. So if you, for example, if you're doing your zeroing, you've set your reticle up, um, you basically come into here and if you know what distance you're setting at, you actually punch that in and it affects your ballistic data. Um, next one is the actual different types of reticles. So I kind of cycle through them. As you can see, there's quite a bit. Um, obviously no preference for me. Uh, and then you can also set the color itself. You know, green, blue, red and white and we're black. I'll probably leave it at red for now. And then we'll get into the advanced menus now. Um, so basically the first one is Wi-Fi, so you can turn that on and off. Uh, next one is compass, if you wanted to turn the compass on and off. Next one's microphone, so I'll put up a little clip of the actual audio quality so you can see whether or not that's for you. Um, that enables or disables the actual onboard microphone. I think this actual scope has the actual the best audio quality of uh, most of the infrared devices that we've used. Um, so you can actually record, like, you know, if you're narrating or whatever, you can actually get good audio out of it. Uh, this one's automatic dormancy, so whether or not you want the scope to automatically go to sleep after, I don't know, like, and then you can set the interval here. The next one, the next one is uh, photo and video settings. So if you want to do single photo, burst photo, if you want to do timer, uh, you can set that mode. Um, so basically there's a little um, photo button on the top of the scope itself and then when you press it this will actually determine what the action is if you want it to delay or you want to have burst. This one's interesting. This one's called uh, recoil activated video. I'm not entirely sure how it works. Um, maybe it turns on uh, after you it senses recoil. Like it starts recording after it, after it detects uh, recoil. I'm not sure why you would want that, but it's there. Oh, this one is um, kind of basically this is, this is kind of your zeroing menu. So you can determine, you can set your gun type, bullet type, ballistic table, your BDC reticles, etc. Um, I'm going to leave this to the manual to explain this in a way better way. Uh, but essentially, what you can do is you can actually set this scope up for different guns, different calibers. You can input a ballistic table uh, for your drops, for your drop data, and it'll actually modify the reticles so it'll show you the different BDC drops uh, based on the table. It's like, I think it's a flat file, like Excel or CSV file that you import directly into the scope, which is pretty neat. This one's the file manager. You can actually watch the, watch the um, clips directly on the device itself. So this is now the advanced menu. So the first menu item is going to be analog video. So if you wanted to hook up like an analog uh, video recorder to this via the USB, you can do that. Next is Bluetooth. So if you had the optional Bluetooth um, attachment, you can enable or disable Bluetooth. This is to hide or show the, uh, the top menu bar. So the status indicator, uh, set, set date and time, uh, compass calibration, pixel defect detection. This one's kind of neat. This one is, it changes between kind of like a, like a cool color or a warm color, depending on what you like to see, um, which is useful like for, as an example at night. At night, you probably want something more of a cool tone. Um, and then day, during the day, you want something more of a warm tone just to kind of match up with your surroundings. 
Um, unit conversions, if you wanted to do meters, you can do meters or yards. Uh, this is to wipe the SD card, factory reset, and then finally the actual um, you know, device information. Okay, so we're back at the bench now. Um, so hopefully that kind of gave you a you know pretty long and detailed overview of this entire device. Overall, who do I think that this scope is for um, and whether or not this is significantly better than the Ricoh series of scopes that's currently out there? Um, yes, it is definitely noticeably better um, in essentially basically every single way uh, from the startup time to the image quality, to the screen, to the controls um, and sort of the expandability this thing basically has it all. Um, if you're looking for something like a top of the line thermal scope, uh, this would be it. I don't think there's anything better out there in terms of uh, what infrared has to offer at this point in time. So if you're on the fence between you know the RH50 or the HYH50W, definitely go for the HYH50W. I think this scope is for those individuals who are looking for the absolute best thermal device on the market right now in terms of not just a thermal scope, but in terms of a thermal clip-on. Um, the performance of this is actually going to be better than even the RH25, uh, better than the CH50W, um, basically because of the fact that it has that extremely high resolution screen in clip-on mode. Um, the iBox is one of the most generous I've seen in, in the entire infrared lineup to date. Um, and I really don't think you can go wrong with that. The, the, the mount base is significantly improved. I definitely would recommend looking into this if you're in the market for, you know, something in this price and performance category. That being said, you know, the, the RH50 is going to be a little bit cheaper. Um, the only reason why I would say definitely take a look at this and see if it's within your budget is because the RH50 is about one to two years old now. Uh, whereas this is basically brand new on the cutting edge. It has the scalability for the future. So that wraps it up. Hopefully you found this useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell so you get notified when we post new videos. We'll see you on the next one.